This video was brought to you by Nebula. Haiti has been without a president for nearly three years. There isn't a single elected government official left in office, armed gangs control most of the capital, and the country is in the grip of a humanitarian, economic, political, and security crisis. Against this background, protests erupted this month, calling for the resignation of the acting prime minister, and tensions have increased thanks to the return of a formal rebel leader who's now openly calling for revolution. So in this video, we're going to explain the crisis engulfing Haiti and why things are escalating further. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Haiti burst onto the world stage in 1791, when the enslaved people of what is now Haiti launched a revolt against colonial France. More than a decade later, in 1804, Haiti was established as an independent country, marking the first successful large-scale revolt by enslaved people in modern history. Now, we're not going to spend too long going over the two tumultuous centuries since then, but if you want to know more about Haiti's history, we made a video a while back that goes into that in more detail, so be sure to click the link below to check that out. But as a very brief summary, Haiti's economic and political development has been seriously hindered by a range of factors. Following independence, France saddled Haiti with monumental reparations to make up for France's loss of income and property from its former slave colony, with the debt and interest not paid off until 1947. Between 1915 and 1934, Haiti was occupied by US Marines and the US gained complete control over Haitian finances and security. Then, between 1957 and 1986, the country suffered under the autocratic rule of the Duvalier dynasty, which was marked by rampant corruption, human rights abuses, and an exodus of Haitian professionals. Eventually, in 1991, the country elected its first ever democratically elected president, but he was deposed in a coup just months later, and subsequently reinstated in 1994 thanks to a UN-backed US military intervention, but was then forced out again in 2004. This time with the US and France allegedly, though they deny this, behind his overthrowing. Anyway, Haiti's current crisis basically started on the 7th of July 2021, when 20 hired gunmen stormed the home of the Haitian president and assassinated him, creating a power vacuum and plunging the country into political chaos. Days before being killed, President Moise had designated Ariel Henry as his prime minister, but Henri hadn't yet officially been sworn in or appointed by parliament because the terms of most lawmakers had expired a year earlier and fresh elections were never held. Nonetheless, following a short dispute over who should become acting prime minister, Henri prevailed and remains in power today while the post of president remains vacant. Henri has pledged to hold elections, but these remain indefinitely delayed due to the ongoing security crisis. As such, in the eyes of many Haitians, he has no legitimacy, a feeling which has only been exacerbated as security conditions have deteriorated. In the absence of a functioning state, armed gangs have now flourished and are now estimated to control some 80% of the capital city. During this time, violence has also soared. Gangs fight rival gangs and the police for territorial control, and the general population is tragically caught up in the conflict. At least 313,000 people are internally displaced, and in 2023 alone, there were more than 4,700 reported homicides and nearly 2,500 kidnappings. Amid all of this, Haitian citizens are increasingly turning to vigilantism, with vigilante groups on their own or alongside police carrying out anti-gang operations. In fact, reported fatalities from vigilante events made up 15% of political violence in Haiti in 2023, according to the ACLED project. Against this backdrop, Haiti's institutions have continued to collapse. The country is now left with zero elected government officials, after its final 10 senators left office following the expiration of their terms in January 2023. The Haitian government under Ariel Henry has nominally been operating under a political agreement reached in December 2022 that aimed to hold elections in 2023 and inaugurate a new government by February 7th, 2024. But no election was held and no new government entered office. In the days leading up to February 7th, violent protests erupted with protesters in the capital and other major regions calling for Ariel Henry to resign. 
Roads were blockaded, some protesters attacked government buildings, and there were clashes between demonstrators and the police that left several individuals dead. Henri condemned the violence and yet again pledged to hold elections once the present insecurity is resolved, adding that he would work with all those who want to help us emerge from this crisis. However, the pressure on Ariel Henry only looks set to grow, because adding fuel to the fire is the return of the notorious former rebel leader Guy Philippe to Haiti. Philippe is a former police chief turned paramilitary leader, who played a key role in the 2004 overthrow of the then-president Jean-Bertrand Aristide. For the past six-ish years, Philippe has been imprisoned in the United States, having been convicted of drug-related money laundering. But in September 2023, he was released from federal prison, and then in late November, the US repatriated him to Haiti, a move that one analyst described as landing like a bomb. Over the past few weeks and months, Philippe has reportedly been touring the country to speak to Haitians and call for a revolution without weapons. On the outskirts of one recent protest calling on Ariel Henry to resign, Philippe was filmed meeting and greeting locals, and called into a radio show to say that the fight is just beginning. He also says that he's spoken to various political parties, including the one led by former Prime Minister Claude Joseph, who was one of those spearheading the recent protests. Crucial to this story is the fact that Guy Philippe is said to have considerable support among the ranks of the Brigade for the Security of Protected Areas, or BSAP, which is an armed environmental protection agency that has in recent years evolved into what is effectively a powerful paramilitary body. In January, acting PM Henri tried to rein in the BSAP by restructuring it and firing the agency's head, an ally of Guy Philippe with Henri citing serious problems of institutional dysfunction. This prompted armed environmental agents in northern Haiti to protest and call for Henri's resignation, resulting in an exchange of fire with the police. And then on February 7th, amid one of the protests in the capital, five BSAP agents were killed in another shootout with police. Now, where does all of this leave Haiti? Well, to put it simply, it's a very unpredictable and tense position. Guy Philippe and his allies insist that they want a peaceful revolution that will reverse the country's downward spiral, not an armed uprising or coup, a desire that seems to be shared by a significant chunk of the population. But the complicated nexus of armed groups and entrenched interests, plus Haiti's turbulent history, make it difficult to envision stability, security and prosperity being brought to the country anytime soon. As a TLDR viewer, I can pretty confidently say that you're curious about the world around you, keen to know what's really going on, rather than just the general media narrative. And one country where this is particularly interesting is China, where a lot of media coverage can be muddled or misleading. If you want to dive deeper though, I'd recommend Polymatter's incredible series, China Actually, which explores the truth behind the Chinese news, examining the truth about China's one-child policy, why China has no allies, how Chinese censorship really works, and what exactly China's nuclear policy looks like. All in all, it's a brilliantly researched and thoughtful series, and it's exclusively available on our streaming service, Nebula. As you know, Nebula is the service that we built with a whole bunch of our creator friends and is home to tons of smart, educational content from all of your favorite creators. The best part is by signing up, you not only get exclusive series like China Actually, Modern Conflicts from Real Life Law, or The Logistics of X from Wendover Productions, it also includes all of our content totally ad-free and sometimes before it arrives on YouTube. Plus, signing up directly supports TLDR, because by doing so, you contribute to the budgets of these big budget documentaries and help us to grow and expand our ambitions. So if you want to get more superb content and support TLDR, then if you sign up using the link below, you can support us directly and get Nebula for 40% off an annual plan. That's about £2 a month. Thanks for your support and for backing Nebula.